Hello everyone. Welcome to the first podcast from Counterpoint Research. In this episode, we are going to talk about the novel coronavirus which has caused a lot of panic across the globe. The virus that originated from China's Wuhan in December 2019 poses a grave threat as per the World Health Organization. According to the latest numbers, as many as 65,000 cases of infection have been registered, whereas the death toll has been close to 1400. Now, smartphone vendors heavily rely on components from China, and with the lockdown, the supply chain has also been affected. In this podcast, we will focus on the impact of coronavirus on the smartphone industry. And to discuss this in depth, we have our research director Tom with us. So Tom, how much is the smartphone industry exposed to China? So China handles about fifty uh, percent or more of the smartphone production in the world. Okay, but not all of the factories are centered around the Wuhan area. So the Wuhan area, which has been the main lockdown area in China, handles only about five to six percent of the handset production. But component-wise, we see a lot more companies in this area. So. It can be a mix of smartphone production or the components that are used in smartphones that will be affected because of this coronavirus. Okay, and what is the exact problem faced by the companies? So, companies like Lenovo, Motorola have their main smartphone production facilities in Wuhan. Okay, so they will experience a big problem, but. Many of the other companies they have production facilities in、uh, Shenzhen or Shanghai or Zhengzhou. So those areas there hasn't been a severe lockdown and the production has resumed. But the companies that have production facilities outside of Wuhan are facing labor shortage. Okay, because a lot of workers from the Wuhan or Hubei area have not returned, or even workers from other regions have not returned, or they have returned, but the the inspection of these workers, whether they are ill or not,、okay. is taking some time. So some production facilities have not returned to one hundred percent utilization. Okay, and are we expecting a dramatic fall in China smartphone sales? Can you talk a little in depth about it? Right. So the sales of smartphones, we can split into two things.、Okay. One is the demand side, and one is the supply side. So the demand side, which is the demand of smartphones in PRC mainland China, is going to fall dramatically. Okay. Because shops have not opened,、uh, people are、uh, very cautious. So the offline sales, in many cases. We've seen reports of fifty percent sales drops, but some of that sales has been shifted to online. Okay. So overall, the demand in China we we think about a twenty percent drop compared to last year. Okay. But on the demand side, there's also some factors we need to consider. So some companies will see shortages in some components, and like I said, some factories will. Slowly come back to full capacity. So as time goes on, we'll also see some shortages in the supply. Okay. Now Huawei heavily relies on the China market. So what are the challenges here? So now about sixty percent of Huawei sales comes from mainland China. So they will be hit the most, and the Huawei brand. Is relying mostly on offline, so we, we will see a lot of decrease in their sales. Okay,、uh, that can be almost similar to the shrink in offline sales, which is close to fifty percent. Okay, and what about Oppo and Vivo? These are the companies that heavily focus on the offline market. Correct. Oppo and Vivo also are brands that rely on offline, but Oppo and Vivo. We see that they have diversified, and they have some portion of sales overseas now. So,、uh, Vivo has a strong market in India, and Oppo has a strong market in Southeast Asia. So, we will expect these two brands 
to concentrate their marketing efforts on these overseas markets. But their sales in mainland China will also fall. It will be brands like Xiaomi or Realme or Honor who have online presence that will prevail. And even Apple has announced shutdown of stores till February 15. So how does that affect Apple? So we've heard that a lot of consumers have shifted their sales channels to online. So Apple sales in China, we don't think it's going to grow, but it will probably fall the least among all the major brands. So the shutdown of the offline stores, I think, have been offset by sales in online stores. Apple is also rumored to launch the iPhone SE 2. So how does the coronavirus impact on Apple's plans? So Apple, I think uh, in the official reports are saying there will be no delay or no, they had prepared for this. But uh, as time goes by, we think the iPhone factory in Zhengzhou will cause problems because that factory, we are hearing that only 40% of the labor force have returned to work. So that will be a problem. And then the development of the iPhone SE2 that will probably be available or launched in late March will have problems in development because U.S. teams from, from Apple will not be able to come to China to finalize the adjustments and set up the production lines properly. So there can, there is always a risk of that. And uh, even though the launch date is not delayed, the production will be slow. So we might see some shortages in the uh, iPhone SE 2 during the, the, the months of April or May. So by when do you think the coronavirus will be contained? So China has been imposing a very strict lockdown. Uh, but still we see affections rising. So we don't think it's under control yet, but we think it will peak in March. So uh, during the end of March, we think the, the number of patients will fall and another two months it will be successfully contained. Now, this is the best case scenario, but we still think this is the most likely scenario considering the Chinese government's experience with SARS. So we think the market will come back to normal in June. Okay. Are we expecting an uh, upward swing in smartphone sales after the dust settles? So a lot of people may think consumers will delay their, their purchasing towards June or July when things are better. Okay. But there's one thing we need to consider. When people... We're going to buy in February. Let's say they're going to buy a specific model from last year. Okay. When, it, when it becomes June, will they still buy that model from last year? Right. Probably not. If there's a new model out with, in the same price point, it will probably have better specs and they'll go for that model. So the model from last year that could have been sold in February will not be sold, and that will be left as bad inventory. Okay. So there will be a mismatch. And then people who buy in June and July, they would want the latest phone that was probably available since May or April. But those phones, because of the shutdown in China and the low production rate, those phones will not be available. Okay. So we'll see a mismatch. Right. The phones that are available will be at least six months old. The phones that people want will not be uh, fully available. And will this current disruption affect the overall sales figure for 2020? Correct. So Q1, Q2 will be low, probably. So we see global sales falling uh, 5 to 6% during the first half. But in the second half, despite the rebound, the recovery in demand, we'll probably see some mismatch in the product inventory and availability. So overall, 2020 will probably be flat. Uh, we had previously thought 
there will be a rise in okay. smartphone demand because of 5G. Right. But now it looks like it will be flat at best. Okay. All right. With that, let's wrap this episode. Thank you, Tom, for giving us your valuable time. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll continuously update our forecast, so please check in with us later. Meanwhile, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.